الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أرنا الحق حق ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطل ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضاه يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته على فيوز جزاكم الله خير وبارك الله فيكم today uh, the 10th of March 2024 is the second time or second muhadara of the completion of the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we have many students today again mashallah jazakum Allah khair for coming up to you and all the parents sheikhs and everybody and we have uh, uh, Maryam Arrabla as the host of today she's going to run the program inshallah ta'ala call everyone and give a time Jazakumullah khair and welcome again and again up here. Jazakumullah khair wa barakallahu fikum. Maryama, Maryama Rabla, you have your mic out here. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Maryama Rabla. I appreciate everyone for coming today. I am happy to be the conductor of this great event. We have many students today who are ready to pre present a portion of today's topic, which is biography of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our first presenter will be Ahmed Roble, who will be reciting Surah One Najmi. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone my name is Ahmed Robla and today I will be reading some verses of سورة النجم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما طل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي روحا علمه شديد القوى ذو مروة فاستوى وهو بالأفق الأعلى ثم دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى ما كذب الفؤاد ما وأى أفتمارونه على ما يرى ولقد رآه نزلة أخرى عند سدرة المنتهى عندها جنة المأوى إذ يغشى السدرة ما يغشى ما زاغ البصر وما طغى لقد رأى من آيات ربه الكبر صدق الله العظيم Thank you, Ahmed, for that beautiful recitation of Ruth Wanagni. Our next pre presenter today will be Ruwaid Ilyas. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. My name is Ruiz Elias and today I'll cover three topics: جمع جمع تقديم جمع تأخير and جمع خسري. Thank you to the parents and students who are attending this presentation. جزاك الله خيرا. The purpose um, of Jum'ah prayer are many. For example, for, for instance, the Jum'ah prayer has many meaningful purposes, 
For instance, males specifically perform Jum'ah prayer in congregation, meaning to come together on this day to worship as the Jum'ah Salah provides the benefits of the social and spiritual benefit. Everyone except these certain people, a own slave, a woman, a child, and someone who is well, are those in which aren't obligated to perform Salah. Pillars of the Jum'ah, to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in both the Qutbahs to say Allah Akbar, to make Salah, to make Salah upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in both the Qutbahs and to join Taqwa in both the Qutbahs. Fourth is to recite of one verse from the Quran in one of the Qutbahs, for example, it could be any for any exam any verse from the Quran. Fifth is to make du'a for the believer of both genders, male and female, in the second qutbah to deliver qutbah before the salah. The conditions of qutbatain: um, one must be free from minor impurities such as in jazz, like bathroom impurities such as urine etc one must also be free from major impurities like filth from animals such as filthy dogs and pigs one must be free of impurities on clothes anywhere on the body and place in which they're praying on for example a muslim prayer a muslim person's prayer mat if uh, if possible one is required to stand while delivering the khutbah. This doesn't apply to those who aren't able to physically stand. Fifth is to sit between the two khutbahs for the duration that one pauses between two postures in salah. Six is to bet is is the between the two khutbahs, the continuation of the khutbah must occur. Continuation of both the khutbahs and salah of the jam'ah. Jam Eighth is the Qutbah must always be recited in the Arabic language, meaning no other language is allowed. And this language must be specifically the Arabic language. Um, ninth is that 40 people should hear the Qutbah. Tenth is the last one, the Qutbah should be done at the timing of Duhr. The conditions of Jum'ah are six. Number one, Jum'ah Salah is performed and occurs at the time of Duhr. Loc location should be between the district of the town, meaning surrounding areas for those people. Third is to perform the Salah in congregation, meaning to come together and pray the Salah as a group of people. Fourth is the number range of males who are performing Jum'ah Salah should be 40 free males in which are mature and permanent residents of the town. No other congregation of Jum'ah in the same town should be offered before, or after, or at the same time. However, exceptions apply. For example, if there's like if there's too many people and there has to be another congregation of Jum'ah Salah, exceptions are allowed. Six is to deliver the Kaabas before the Salah. Definitions, if you may not know, is that permanent residence means that. The person lives there and doesn't leave except in times in which they need to. The conditions of Jum'a uh, jum Taqdeem are four. First off is to start off with the first is Salah, for example, Duhur. Secondly is to have the intention of joining both Salads, for example, Duhur and Asr. Thirdly is to perform the Salah consecutively, meaning without interruption, which also means no break at all, so each salah must be performed immediately after each other. Lastly is the continuity of the excuse, meaning the excuse of the travel must still be valid. The, the conditions of jama'at al are two. Firstly is to have the intention of delaying the salah up until after its time and it must be the right time. For example, one must have the intention of delaying, for example, the duhr salah into the asr salah. This intention must be at the right time. Secondly, the remaining of the excuse until completion of the second salah must also still be valid. No, This also means that there are no breaks in both the salads of the asr and duhr. The conditions of khas, uh, khasri 
is to shore in the salah. The journey of the one traveling must be to marhalas, meaning 81 kilometers one way as the distance of the destination, which could also mean two different destinations. The journey in which the individual is traveling in must be a permissible journey in which is allowed in sharia. This also means like if you're traveling for the wrong purposes or anything that goes against Islam um, principles, then it's not allowed. But if it is a permissible one, then it's allowed. And the the one the salah that you're performing is is going to be accepted. One must also have the knowledge of the personality of qasri, meaning what's allowed of qasri. One must have the intention of qasri during takbirat al-ihram. As one begins the salah with Allahu Akbar, the individual who is opening the salah with takbir al-ihram must have the intention while performing takbir al-ihram. The salah is the salah of the four rakahs, just like the examples of asr, duhur, and isha. The salah starts from start to end while on one's traveling journey. However, if the person's car arrives way before the salah is done, performance of the full salah must be performed. Following another person while performing salah isn't allowed at all in any parts of the salah, meaning you aren't allowed to follow somebody who's completing the salah while you're also shortening your salah. Thank you, Duraida, for your beautiful presentation about the Juma prayers. Do we have any other questions? If there are no questions, we'll go to the next presenter. Um, um, Maria, I have a question. I think. And Duraida, you say you can, uh, how many salads can I join together? Like, for example, if I want to make Jum'ah Taqdeem, how many salah I can combine? Oh, Jum'ah Taqdeem? Yeah. How much you can combine? Yeah, uh, yeah how many salah? Yeah. Two salah, three salah, or what? No, it's two salads. It should be two salads, pretty sure. So what are the two salads that I can combine? What are they? For example, it could be Duhur and Asr, if you wanted to combine. Okay. So I can't combine Asr and Maghrib? No, because those two are not like, they're not close to each other and it's also not bad. Okay. What about if I want to shorten my salat? What are the two salat, what are the salat that I can shorten into two salat, two ragate? Yeah, you could do, um, like a qasri. Oh yeah, qasri. It could be the, The, it could be you could you could do salats like the, um the uh, duhur asar and um the isha salad. So any salad that has a four raga, you can yeah. shorten the two raga. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, just like a continue up to Leon. All right, thank you, Ruby, for your beautiful presentation. Our next presenter will be Ali Roble. Alia. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة وسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم everyone my name is Ali Rabla and today I'm going to be presenting the conversion of the six people from Yathrib. 
at what time did the Prophet وسلم, contact the pilgrims in Hajj season and why? The Prophet وسلم, wanted to meet the pilgrims at night so the Quraysh didn't prevent the Prophet وسلم, from spreading Islam. One, one day did who did he pass through the Aqaba with Abu Bakr and Ali bin Abi Talib radiyallahu anhuma and he passed by the Aqaba of Mina. Who did he meet there? He found there six men. All of them were from the Khazraj tribe in Yathrib and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam invited them into Islam. What was their advantage? They heard the Jews say that there was a Prophet that a prophet was about to appear in those days and that they would believe believe him and follow him. The name of the six men were Uqba bin Amir, Jabir bin Abdullah, Asad bin Zurara, Aun bin Harith, Rafi' bin Malik, and Qutba bin Amir radiallahu anhuma. Did they listen to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and accept Islam? Yes, they accepted Islam. What did they do after going back to Yathrib? They invited more people into Islam. What did this event mark? It marked the beginning of the growing of Islam. Assalamu Alaikum everyone. Do you have any questions? If there are no questions, we'll move on to the next presenter. Thank you, Adi Robler, for your beautiful presentation. Our next presenter will be Salawa Ibrahim. Malin, can you share it? Because I'm on the phone. Okay. Oh, okay. And uh, what was your subject? Uh, the childhood and youth. Okay. Uh, okay. Mariama, go to the next chapter. I don't have that one. I have to look for it. Go to the next chapter. Okay. okay. Um, our next presenter will be Ryan Hashi. Amina, uh, not, not Ryan. Yes, Ryan Hashi. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Ryan Ashi. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, today I'll be talking about the rebuilding of the Kaaba. The rebuilding of the Kaaba and arbitration issue what was the age when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when quraish took in hand the rebuilding of the kaaba he was about 35 years old what is the kaaba it is the kaaba is the oldest house of worship on earth what are its names Baytullah, House of Allah, the Asian House, the Scared Mosque, House of the Worship made by the Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, who raised it. The Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail, peace be upon him, constructed it for the worship of Allah at its instance. Why did Quraysh decide to rebuild the Kaaba? They, they decided to rebuild the Kaaba because the building of the Kaaba, which was made of loose stones, was damaged by, uh, by flood. Also being roofless, it was exposed to the warning fact, the wearing factors of the nature. 
What was its height? It was 6.30 meters high. What sort of money did they decide to use in its rebuilding? Only valid money, halal money, all monies that derive from heredity of no treachery of unjust practices were included. Who started to knock down the wall? Walid bin Mughira Mukhazim. Why did Quraysh fear to knock down the wall? They feared that they might subject to, uh, to harm or divine worth. Wrath. How did they arrange the building worth? They divided the work among various tribes. Each tribe was responsible for rebuilding a part. Name the man who laid the stones. He was a Roman mason called Booker. How did the work go on? It went on in harmony till the time came to place the scared black stone. What is the black stone? Who had fitted it in the wall of the Kaaba? It is a special is a, it is a special and outstanding stone fitted by the Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him. According to some scholars, it was brought from paradise in the beginning. It was white, but due to the constant touch of the sinful person, it turned black. Why was it fixed in the why was it fixed in the wall of the Kaaba? It was fixed there as a sign where the pilgrims should start and end their off. What was the dispute arose among the tribes and why? The black stone was held in respect and every tribe wanted to have the honor of lifting it into its place. How long did the dispute continue? It continued for four days. Who gave the suggestion to solve the trouble? Abu Umayya, Abu Umayya and old Quraysh chief. What did he suggest? Did others agree? He suggested that the first person to come through the doorway into the courtyard of the Kaaba the next morning should be assigned to, to settle the dispute. The chiefs of other tribes also agreed, then all settled down anxiously to wait for the fortunate one. Who was the first to enter the courtyard of the Kaaba the next morning? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did the Prophet say on seeing him? They said, This is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the truthful and the trustworthy. We have confidence in him. Let him decide the dispute. How did the Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, settle the dispute? He asked for a big piece of cloth, cloth and placed the black stone on it. Then he called one man from each planet and told him to lift a corner of the cloth and carry it to the wall of the Holy Kaaba. Then the Prophet, peace and blessing upon of Allah be upon him, fitted the black stone into his proper, proper place. Thus he settled the dispute without both shed. Why did the Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, kiss the black stone? He used it to kiss while it kissed it while walking around the Kaaba for the noble hands of Ibrahim and Ismail, peace be upon him, and touched it. It, it is it worship to kiss or touch the black stone? No, it is not worship, but a special regard shown to its compliance with the commandments of Allah. Why did Umar bin Khattab told 
told, May Allah be pleased with him, say, while kissing the black stone. He addressed it in front of a large gathering of Muslims and said, I know by Allah you are a stone incapable of doing good or bad. Had I not seen the Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, kissing you, I would not have done so. It is it compulsory for the pilgrims to kiss the black stone. It is not for them compulsory to that for them to kiss the black stone. At some at times of large gatherings, it is enough to touch it or wave to it from a distance instead of making problems for others. Uh, I. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Thank you for, for listening to my presentation. Okay, if we don't have any questions, we'll move on to the next presenter. Thank you, Ryan, for this amazing presentation. The next presenter today will be Amin Hashi. Uh, I, I, I have uh, Ryan and uh, Salwa. Okay, our, our next presenter will be Salwa Ibrahim. Thank you. Okay. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Salwa and today I'll be presenting about the childhood and youth. What what did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam do in his childhood? He was a sheep farmer once. Did he take part? Did he ever take part in entertainment activities with his fellow children? He never engaged in any naughty behavior. He avoided from engaging in any of the crazy games that kids his age were playing. Who took care of him after the death of Abdul Muttalib, his uncle Abu Talib? When did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam travel to Syria and with whom? He and his uncle Abu Talib went to Syria at the time he was 12 years old. Did any particular incident take place during his journey? A monk by the name of Mahira noticed the caravan sitting beneath a tree as they arrived in Busra. He informed Abu Talib that the Prophet Muhammad would eventually rule over the all people, he will get a word with Allah that will be of mercy to all living things. Additionally, he advised Abu Talib to look after him in case the Jews did him any harm. So he was ordered back to Mecca by Abu Talib. When did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa travel to Traveled to Syria a second time and with for whom? At the age of 25, he made a second trip to Syria to conduct business on behalf of Khadija radiallahu anha as a merchant. Who was Khadija radiallahu anha? Trade woman Khadija bin uh, Qawailid was a respected individual in Mecca who negotiated with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for marriage. Her friend Nef Nafisa. Why did she prefer Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for marriage? Her preference for him in the spouse was based on his integrity and behavior. When did she marry Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? She married Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when she was forty. What was the age of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the time of marriage? He was twenty-five. What did he give her as mir? Twenty camels. Was Khadija radiallahu anha a widow? Yes, she was a widow. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was her third husband. How old was Khadija radiallahu anha when she died? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 50 years old while she was 65. How old was the relation between the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khadija radiallahu anha? Throughout the 25 years of their marriage, they had become closer, close to one another. What did she do for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? She supported and com comforted comforted Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam during his difficult times. Did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam make trade journeys after marriage? No, he didn't travel for business after being married. 
Did Prophet Muhammad وسلم, marry any other woman during lifetime of Khadija radiallahu anha? No, he did not marry any woman while they were still living. How was Prophet Muhammad وسلم, known in society? He was known as Al Amin, truthful and as Sadiq, trustworthy. Did he get any sort of education? He wasn't educated at all. Name the war in which the Prophet ﷺ participated in his early age when the Fijar's um, sacrilegious war broke out between Oilan and the Quaish and Banu Kinana. On one side, he was just 15. Why was the war called sacrilegious? It was given that name because the holy month were among the in- inviable, inviable that were made available. Viable. Um, name the give the names of the Prophet Sallallahu uncle. He had two sons and four daughters, as given below. One Qasim died young. Two Abdullah, who was called Tayyib and Tahir, also died in childhood. Three Zainab radiallahu anha married to Abdul As. Four Ruqayya um, radiallahu anha married first to Abu Lahab's son Uthbah and but later married to Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anha. Five Um Kulthum. Um, Radiallahu anha married first to Abu Lahab's son Uthayba, but later married to Uthman bin Affan. Radiallahu anha. After the death of Ruqayya, Radiallahu anha. Six Fatima Azahra. Radiallahu anha married to Ali bin Abi Talib. Radiallahu anha. What was the purpose of Al Fudul agreement in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam participated before his prophethood? There were had Hal Zubair, Abu Talib, Hamza, Radiallah Anha, Abu Lahab, Qitaq, Maqwam, Safar, and Abbas, Radiallah Anha. How was Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in his youth? The purpose was to suppress violence and injustice and protect the rights of the weak. Name the ladies whom Prophet, whom the Prophet called mother. Halim as Sadia, who suckled him, to Um Ayman, radiallahu anha, the slave girl of his father, who served him too much, three Fatima bin Asad, wife of his uncle Abu Talib, and mother of Ali bin Abi Talib. How many times in the name Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, mentioned in the Quran? Four times. Who were the maternal uncles of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Bani, uh, Bani Adi. Bin Najar and Bani Zuhra were his biological uncle. Which way did Prophet Muhammad sallam, follow before the prophethood? He followed the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Did his uncle Abu Talib accept Islam? No, he didn't accept Islam. Polytheism was his religious of death, religion of death. What was the surname of his Prophet sallallahu In according to Arab tradition, his surname was Abdul Qasim, Qasim, which came from the name of his oldest son, Qasim, who said, I am offspring of the two slothered. The reason why the Prophet said this is that although Allah provided them with a way out and saved them, Ismail alayhi salam, son of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Abdullah, son of Abdul Muttalib, were both offered for slothered. What should one say when the Prophet ﷺ name is mentioned? It is important to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah, may Allah utter his name and protect him from all harm. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Uh, uh, can you go back to your presentation a little bit, Altu? Uh so go go back a little bit. Oh, you're presenting. Oh, I was okay, 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 okay. Sorry. So this question, question twenty four, says, "What was the purpose of fudul agreement in which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam participated before, uh, before his prophethood?" So, what is the answer of this question? So you mistyped it, I think. 
So this answer, and this one goes somewhere around here. Oh. Anyway, this answer right here goes here because you talk about the ankles of the Prophet and they're all here. But this answer of this question would be right here. Uh, I saw it somewhere here. Right here. This is the answer. This is this is this this answer, okay? So you do it like this. Uh, uh, I think anyway, we'll rearrange later on, inshallah. But the, the, the answer of this one will be next slide. The next slide, like this one, this one, this one. This one. Okay. You got up to everything that was good, mashallah, barakallah fiqh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Continue up, Muriel. If you have no questions, we'll move on to the next presenter. Thank you, Sarua, for your beautiful presentation. Our next presenter will be Amina Hashi. <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم everyone my name is Amina Hashi and today I'll be presenting Amin, Amina, up to, are you sharing your screen? I'm doing it right now okay, yeah today I'll be, I'll be presenting about preaching Islam in public preaching Islam in secret and the moon splitting Preaching of Islam in secret. What is preaching Islam in secret? It was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling people about Islam in secret, not because he wanted to hide it, but because to protect the Muslim people so they do not get harmed or anything. But they succeeded in it as long as the preaching remained secret. How was the prayer performed at that time? At the early stage, the prayer was performed in Surah Al in the morning and the evening. They only performed it two times a day, and it changed over time. We pray five times a day now. How many people embraced Islam in the early stage? It was about 40 people who embraced Islam, but it was slowly growing. How many years did the call in secret continue? It continued around three years. It is said privately as opposed to secretly, as it mentioned that it was an open secret. People at this stage did it, did revert to Islam, but no public announcement was necessarily made. The wisdom of this private call is assumed to be that it avoided a conflict between the Muslims and the society. During this time, where would the Muslims gather secretly? They would gather in the Rul Arqam to take lessons on Islam as per the revelation sent down to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from time to time. Did early converts represent all sections of the society? Yes, they represented all sections of the society. They were slaves or businessmen, the rich and poor, and the powerful and the weak. Preaching Islam in public. After the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was preaching Islam in secret for three years, the angel Jibreel came to him and said, Allah said to start preaching Islam in public to everyone and that the idols and the other gods that they are praying to are not the real gods. How did he call in public? He gathered clansmen in a banquet, but due to Abu Lahab's 
opposition, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said nothing in that meeting. Later, he invited them again. There were about 45 people. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stressed Allah's ones and his prophethood. He further said that the people would be called to account for their deeds. Accordingly, they will be cast out or admit in heaven. Why did the Quraysh get angry? Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had begun to condemn the worship is idols. What was the impact of preaching in public? The people accepted Islam increasingly and remained steadfast to it despite persecution of Quraysh. Also, so more people can hear about Islam and become one. The miracle of the splitting of the moon. The splitting of the moon is a miracle in the Muslim faith attributed to the Islamic count. Islamic Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it is diverted in from Surah Al-Qamar and mentioned by the Muslims tradition such as the Asbab Al-Nuzul Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam points out the splitting of the moon what is a miracle a miracle is a supernatural feat performed by the prophets they cannot do it themselves Allah empowers them to perform miracles are a sign of prophethood. What is the main miracle of the prophethood? The Quran, the everlasting divine message for the mankind. Did the prophet show others miracles too? Yes, there are so many miracles shown by him, sometimes on demand and sometimes when needed. Did the infidels of Mecca also demand for a miracle? What did they demand? Yes, they wanted the prophet to split the moon. What did the Prophet do in the wake of the restless instance of the infidels? He invoked Allah to bless him with the power to show the miracle to the infidels. How did the Prophet split the moon? He pointed to it with his fingers and it split into two parts for some time. Then the two points joined as before. Did the infidel see it? Yes, not only in Mecca, but in other parts in the world, and it was seen by the people. Did the pagan of Mecca convert to Islam? No, due to their ignorance and arrogance, they continue to attach to their disbeliefs. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Amina, for this beautiful presentation. Our next presenter will be Faduma Ibrahim. Um, can you uh, present? There. Oh, Faduma, you want me to share it? Yeah. Oh. That's you, right, Father Brian? Yeah. All right, okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah, my shaitan is rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum, everyone. My name is Father Ibrahim Mahi, and today I'm going to present to you the persecution and arch enemies of Islam. First, we're going to talk about the persecution. Um, what did the Quraysh do to encounter Islamic call at the beginning of the fourth year of the Prophet Sallallahu mission? They wanted to hurt the Prophet Sallallahu and made new believers suffer. They set up a group with Abu Lahab as the leader and tried to tempt the Prophet Sallallahu with worldly things to make a deal. What did the Meccan chiefs tell the pilgrims in Mecca? They told him to stop the Prophet ﷺ from spreading his message during the pilgrimage. They spread lies among the pilgrims, uh, saying that Muhammad ﷺ was a magician who could separate family members. What did the uncle of Uthman bin Affan do with him on the latter's acceptance of Islam? He covered him with a mat made of palm leaves and lit a fire beneath. 
How did the mother of uh, Musab bin Umair behave her son? She made him go hungry and kicked him out of the house. How did Umayyah bin Khalaf treat Bilal? His master would beat him badly at times. They would tie a rope around his neck and street boys were forced to drag him through the plains and over the hills of Mecca. Over times, he was tied up and forced to lie on the sizzling sand with heavy stones on top. How were Yasser and his family persecuted? Yasser, Sumaya, and Amar uh, were sometimes put on hot gl- a glowing coal and made to lie on hot sand while getting beaten a lot. Um, how did Yasser die? He died of severe tortures. How did Sumaya die? Abu Jahal uh, him, uh, himself stabbed her to death with a knife, making her the first woman to sacrifice in Islam. Did Amar bin Yasser also undergo the tortures? Yeah, he also endured different t- kinds of torture. Name the women who were persecuted for embracing Islam. They are Zanir, Nadia, and her daughter Umma uh, Ubais, and many others. What did the people in Mecca who believed in many gods do to, the, do to Kaaba bin Uh, They used to pull his hair and twist his neck and made him lie on the burning coal with a big rock on his chest to prevent him from escaping. Now we're going to move on to Arthur's Islam. Um, Who was Abu Jahl? Abu Jahl was one of the nobles of Quraysh. What what was his actual name and why was he called Abu Jahl? His actual name was Omar bin Hashim and surname was Abu Hat. Abu Hakam, but due to his hate towards Islam, he was called Abu Jahl. Why was Abu Jahl against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He was against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam judged the idol worship and asked believers to trust in Allah's oneness. Who, ha, ha, how was his behavior with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He hated the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and wanted to hurt him. He insulted and threatened threatened him and tried to get others to do the same. He even suggested that a group of men should kill him. Name, uh, name his son who later embraces Islam. Akrama bin Abi Jahl. Where was he killed? He was killed in Badr by two young boys of the Ansar. What, what, what would Abu Jahl do with new converts? Whenever he found out that a rich and important person became sla- um, became a Muslim, he would try to make them feel bad. He would threaten them and hurt them badly if they were poor or didn't have any, many friends. How? What did Abu Jahl do to harm the people, uh, the the Prophet وسلم, on another occasion? Once he swore, he would dust the Prophet his face and step on his neck. But when they tried to do it, they turned back and covered their faces with their hands. When people asked why, they said they ha- they saw a ditch of burning fire and some wings flying. Later, the Prophet said that if the person had kept going, an angel would have hurt them a lot. What did Abu Jahl make attempts at the Prophet Sallallahu life? Abu Jahl was angry with Muhammad Sallallahu because he spoke badly about their religion. Abu Jahl wanted to throw a big rock on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi head to get rid of him. The audience agreed with him and the next day Abu Jahl waited for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to pray. He carried the big rock but when he got closer, close to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi he got scared and his rock fell. People asked what happened, and he said, a big camel with scary teeth almost ate me. Later, Muhammad said it was Jibreel. If Abu Jahl had proceeded, he would have been killed. What did Abu Jahl do when the Prophet was one day preaching Islam among the people? He threw dust on the Prophet Prophet's head and told people not to listen to him. He said, do not be carried away by his words. He, you, he wants you to abandon the worship of Black Man and Uzad. Then people threw stones and dirt at the Prophet Thank you for your attention. Any questions?
Thank you, Fabula, for your beautiful presentation. Our our next presenter will be Ayub Hussein. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Ayub Hussein and today I will be presenting Al Isra wal Mi'raj the night journey What is Isra and Mi'raj Isra is the night journey the Prophet وسلم, took from Mecca to Jerusalem. Mi'raj is the Prophet وسلم, ascent from the Masjid Al Aqsa to the heavens. <coughs> Isra and Mi'raj are two parts of a night journey that happened during the 10th year of prophethood in the 17th surah of the Quran called Al Isra. But most of the information can be found in the hadith. <coughs> the surah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير Glory be to the one who took his servant, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by night from the sacred mosque, sacred mosque of, to the farthest mosque whose surroundings we have blessed, so that we may show him some of our signs. One, indeed, he too alone is the all-hearing and all-seeing. What happened during the event of Isra? At the beginning, Jibri alayhi salam went to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cut his chest open and took the heart jibreel alayhi salam then purified the heart with zamzam water then put it back in its place the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then began his journey accompanied by jibreel alayhi salam to masjid al-aqsa the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached masjid al-aqsa on a horse called buraq lightning after reaching Masjid Al-Aqsa, the Prophet وسلم, tied his horse to a ring. Then he began to lead the Prophet وسلم, in Salah. He led Adam وسلم, in the first heaven, Zakariya وسلم, in the second heaven, Isa وسلم, in the third heaven, Yusuf وسلم, in the fourth heaven, Idris وسلم, in the fifth heaven, Harun وسلم, in the sixth heaven, Musa وسلم, in the seventh heaven. What is Bayt al Ma'mur? Beit al-Ma'mur is a house very similar to the Kaaba, but Beit al-Ma'mur was visited by 70,000 angels daily. But these angels will not have gotten another chance till the Day of Judgment. But it was during this day journey that the Prophet ﷺ was told to perform 50 prayers. Prophet Musa السلام, told the Prophet وسلم, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a reduction because the people of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can't do that many. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then ascended again and asked for a reduction. Allah reduced it to ten, then five. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was then to ashamed to ask for another reduction, so he accepted this offer. But we still get the reward of that equal to fifty salah. Everything that happened during the journey. Number one. The Prophet Sallallahu chest was cut open and his heart was taken out of his chest to be purified with Zamzam water. Number two, Jibreel Alayhi Salam brought two rivers, one containing wine evil in the form of evil and another containing milk in the form of good. The Prophet Sallallahu then shows the river containing milk and so this led to Jibreel Alayhi Salam to say this, you have been guided to the nature. Had you chose wine, your nation would have been misled. So the Prophet وسلم, chose the right one. Number three, the Prophet وسلم, saw two real rivers, the Euphrates River and the, two Nile, and the Nile River. Those two rivers symbolize where Muslims will always adhere to Islam. Number four, the Prophet وسلم, 
saw the, saw the guardian of hell with a emotionless frowning face. He also saw Ahlu, the people of Ahlu now getting punished for the wrongdoings in this dunya. The aftermath of the journey. After the Prophet وسلم, informed the people about the miracle, miraculous event that happened, the true Muslim they believed as he told them because they also believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a power to do that. For the regular people, they asked him to describe what he saw there. The Prophet وسلم, didn't ever go to Masjid Al Aqsa, so this was further verifying it. For Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, they asked him about it, about the story. He thus verified it. The Prophet وسلم, then gave him the title of the verifier of truth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Do you have any questions? Thank you, you Hussain, for your wonderful presentation about Islam and Miraj. Um, our next presenter will be Ahmed Hussain. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم أبوان ما نيم سحر حسين and today I'll be presenting the first and second عقب pledge the first عقب pledge the Prophet وسلم, continued preaching Islam even during the opposition of Quraysh. He did this by contacting the people who came to Mecca for pilgrimage and invited them to Islam. While preaching Islam, he came in contact with the six people of Yathrib during Hajj season. They lived their prophethood. Um, what was the first uh, first Aqaba pledge? While the six people of the Khazraj, Khazraj tribe were returning to Yathrib, they had told everyone what they had heard and seen. Because of that, a group of people came from Yathrib for the sole purpose of meeting the Prophet ﷺ. They swore loyalty to the Prophet, and this was known as the first Aqaba pledge. They swore that they would not worship anyone but Allah. They would neither steal, commit adultery, kill their children, or speak falsehood, or disobey the Prophet ﷺ in any way. The first Aqaba pledge was held during the Hajj season, the twelfth, the twelfth year of prophethood. Twelve men had attended the pledge five from last year's pilgrimage. The Prophet ﷺ sent Musa bin Umair as a teacher to instruct the people of Yathrib. The second Aqaba pledge. The second Aqaba pledge took place during the thirteenth year of prophethood, the Hajj season. Um, this time, many more people had come for this pledge, a total of 75 people, 73 women, 73 men and 2 women. The Prophet's uncle Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, he had said, People of Khazraj, you all know the, the position that Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, holds among us. We have protected him from our people as much as we could. He refuses to join any party except you, so if you think you can carry out what you promised while inviting him to your town, and if you can defend him against the enemies, then you assume the burden that you have taken. But if you are going to surrender him and betray him after carrying him with you, then it is better for you to leave him now because he is respected and well defended in his own place. Ka'b bin Madik replied, We have heard your words, and now, O Messenger of Allah, it is for you to speak and take us take, take from us uh, any pledge that you want regarding your Lord and yourself. The Prophet وسلم, then recited some Quranic verses, then called them to Allah and encouraged them to embrace Islam. He concluded by saying, I give you my pledge, Islam. He can, uh, I give you my pledge that you exclude me from whatever you exclude your women and children from. Barah bin Marur then caught the Prophet وسلم, by said and said, Yes, we swear by Allah who sent you as a prophet that we will exclude you from whatever we exclude our women from. Have confidence in us, O Allah's Messenger. By Allah, we are genuine fighters and quite reliable in war. It is a trait passed down to us from our ancestors. Then Abdul Hayatim, uh, Abdul Hayatim bin Tahin said, O Messenger of Allah, between us and the Jews, there are agreements which we would sever. If Allah grants you power and victory, should we accept that you will not leave us and join the ranks of your people, uh, Quraysh? The Prophet then smiled and said, No, it will never be your blood. 
um, it would never be. Your blood will be my blood in life and death. I'll be with you and you'll be with me. I will fight whom you fight and I'll make peace with those whom you make peace. The second Aqal pledge proved helpful to the Muslims because after the pledge, the Prophet وسلم, commanded the Meccans to quickly join the brothers of Yathrib. After the pledge, there were 12 subordinates to preach Islam in Yathrib. There were um, Asad bin Duraur, Abdullah bin Rawah, Sa'd bin Rabi, Rafi bin Malik, Bara, Bara Marur, Abdullah bin Amr, Ubadah bin Samir, Sa'ad bin Ubadah, um, Mundir bin Amr, and they were from Khazraj. Husayd bin Hidar, Sa'ad bin Qaytama, and Rafa', Rafa bin Abdul Mundir from Aus. From women, the pledge was taken orally since the Prophet would never shake hands with a woman he is not related to. When Quraysh had gotten word from, of the pledge, um, pledges, they realized that an agreement of this sort would produce far-reaching problems of their lives and wealth. Knowing that they wanted to go protest against these pledges, they said, O oh, people of Khazraj, it transpired to us that you have come to here to conclude a pact with Muhammad وسلم, and evacuate him out of Mecca. By Allah, we do not like to have any sort of fight between you and us. The disbelievers of Yatrib refused and concluded that there was no truth in the report of Quraysh. The reason was because the Muslims of Yatrib had met with Prophet Muhammad وسلم, secretly, and so the disbelievers had no clue about the pledge. When Quraysh got word that the pledge had already happened, they pursued the Muslims who already left. However, they had caught Sa'ad bin Ubadah and tortured him later. Uh, had tort and tortured him later on. Mut'im bin Adi and Harith bin Harb saved him. The second Aqaba pledge conclusion. The conclusion of the second Aqaba pledge was that it was a very successful and many Muslims benefited from. It was known as the Great Aqaba pledge. It created affection, support and cooperation between the Muslims of Mecca and Yathrib. The first person to migrate to Yathrib was Abu Salama radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr uh, radiallahu anhu had also migrated, but he waited a little longer than everyone else commanded by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Do you guys have any questions? Thank you, Ahmed, for your wonderful presentation. Our next presenter will be Ayan Hashi. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Today I'll be presenting about the Prophet Muhammad wasallam's yeah. immigration to Medina. Introduction. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Today I'll be presenting about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu immigration to Medina. These are the people who will be involved in the journey of the Prophet's immigration to Medina, and they each have specific positions in the story. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Abu Bakr, Ali bin Abi Talib, Asma bin Abu Bakr, Abdullah bin Raqait. Amir bin Fuhaira, uh, Abdullah bin Abu Bakr, Suraqa bin Malik, Zubair bin Awam, Umm Ma'bad, and Abu, Abu Burada. What did the Quraysh think about the far reaction effects of the Aqaba pledge? They grew suspicious that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was also ready to depart at any time. They feared that under his leadership, the Muslims of Medina might build a base there and invade Mecca. What did they do then? They held a meeting at Darun Nadwa to put an end to the approaching danger. 
How many leaders of the Quraysh attended the meeting? There were 14 leaders, Shayba bin Rabi'a, Uthman bin Rabi'a, Abu Sufyan bin Harb, Duwayma bin Adi, Jubair bin Mutim, Harith bin Qulab, um, Bukhtari bin Hisham, Zarna bin Aswad, Hakim bin Hizar, Abu Jahal bin Hishar, Nabi bin Hijaj, Munabih bin Hajaj, and Umayya bin Khalaf. What did they plan at the meeting? They planned to assassinate the Prophet ﷺ according to the plan. A group of young men, one from each of the clans, were to put the Prophet ﷺ to the sword simultaneously so that the guilt might be shared by all and consequently, Bani Hashim might have no option except to agree with the blood money. How did the Prophet ﷺ come to know about the plot? The Quraysh had kept their plot very secret, but Allah the Almighty revealed it to the Prophet and granted permission to immigrate to Medina. What did the Prophet ﷺ do then? He informed his friend Abu Bakr عنه, about, the pro- about the proposed immigration to Medina and told him that he would be the Prophet ﷺ's companion in the journey. What preparations did Abu Bakr make for the immigration? He arranged two she camels, a guide called Abdullah bin Uruqayt, and a servant, Amir bin Fuhira. What did the chiefs of Mecca do to implement their plan? They chose 11 men, Abu Jahl bin Hisham, Hakam bin As, Uqba bin Abi Mu'ayt, Nadir bin Harith, Umayya bin Khalaf, Zama bin Aswad, Tuwayma bin Adi, Abu Lahab bin Abdul Muttalib, Ubay bin Khalaf, Nabih bin Hajjaj, and his brother Munabih bin Hajjaj, and advised them to besiege the Prophet ﷺ's house under the cover of night. What did the assassins do then? As the night set in, they gathered at the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ's door, waiting to kill him the moment he would come out early in the morning. What did Abu Jahl say to the people besaging the Prophet's house. He said to them arrogantly, Muhammad وسلم, claims that if you follow him, he will appoint you rulers over the Arabs and non-Arabs, and in the hereafter your reward will be the garden similar to those in Jordan. Otherwise, he will slaughter you, and after death you will be doomed to hell. What did the Prophet advise Ali bin Abi Talib to do? He advised him to sleep in the former's bed and wrap himself with a green mantle. The Prophet assured him that no harm would come to him from anywhere. What did the Prophet do when he came out of his house? As the assassins waited outside, the Prophet ﷺ came out. He picked up a handful of dust, threw it over their heads, and recited a Quranic verse. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْسِرُونَ why did the Prophet ﷺ take shelter with Abu Bakr عنه, in the cave of Thor? Knowing that Quraysh would mobilize all his potentials to find out him, the Prophet played a clever trick on them. Instead of taking the road to Medina in the north side of Mecca, as the polytheists could expect, he walked along a road leading to Yemen. What did the Quraysh do with Ali radiallahu an? They brought him to Ka'b, to the Kaaba, beat him brutally, and confined him there for an hour in order to know the whereabouts of the Prophet وسلم, and his companion Abu Bakr radiallahu an, but to no avail. Where did they go then? They went to Abu Bakr's house and inquired Asma radiallahu anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, of Abu, of Abu Bakr radiallahu an, of the whereabouts of the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr. Peace be upon him. How did Abu Jahl behave um, Asma bin Abu Bakr? He slapped her so severely that her earring broke off. What did the Quraysh do then? They conveyed an emergency meeting to determine the future course of action. They explored all nearby areas and blocked the roads leading out of Mecca. What was the prize announced by Quraysh to bring back the two men? They offered a reward of 100 camels. Who entered the cave first and why? Abu Bakr first entered the cave to make sure that it was cont- it had nothing 
that would hurt them. He cleaned it and closed all holes with piece, pieces torn off from his clothes and then asked the Prophet to step in. What happened to Abu, ba Abu Bakr in the cave? The Prophet وسلم, went in, laid his head in, on Abu Bakr's lap and fell asleep. Suddenly Abu Bakr's foot was stung by a po poisonous insect. It hurt so bad that his tears fell on the Prophet's face. What did the Prophet وسلم, do? He applied his saliva on Abu Bakr's foot and then later got relief at once. How many days did they stay in the cave? They stayed in the cave for three days, which was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What prevented the poly what prevented the polytheists from entering the third cave? Allah made the entrance of the cave obscure to them. A spider had spun its webs, and the pigeon laid its eggs of the off the entrance of the cave, so they did not think of entering it. Who was Abdullah bin Uraqait? He was a guide hired by Abu Bakr and trusted by him, though he was still a disbeliever. Which route did they follow with Abdullah bin Uraqait? They followed the coastal route. Why did Suraqat bin Malik bin Dusham ride in the pursuit of the Prophet Sallallahu Because he hopes to find the migrators and win the reward of a hundred camels. What happened to Suraqat during his chase? His horse stumbled twice and threw him down, but he continued his chase until he saw the Prophet وسلم, until he saw his party ahead. As he came close to them, his horse again stumbled with him. This time, its four legs sank into the ground. What did he realize? He realized that the Prophet وسلم, was protected against him. What did he say to the Prophet وسلم? He told him that he would do no harm to him. How did he escape the trouble? He requested the Prophet ﷺ to pray for him. The Prophet ﷺ invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him and the four legs of his horse were released. What did Allah ask the Prophet ﷺ to do? He asked him to write out a note of protection that will be token for him. Who wrote the note? Amir bin Fuhayr wrote the note and gave it to Suraqa. What did the Prophet ﷺ predict for him? He predicted, O oh, Suraqa, how will you feel when the bracelets of Khosro will be on your hands? Did it, exact, did it happen exactly like that? Yes, it happened exactly like that during the caliphate of Umar bin Khattab. Did, did Suraqa tell Quraysh about the Prophet Wasallam's whereabouts? No, he did not tell them anything about the Prophet Wasallam's whereabouts. When the Prophet وسلم, and his fellow grew thirsty, they passed an old woman. What was her name? Her name was Atika bin Khalid, who was best known as Umm Ma'bad. What did the Prophet وسلم, ask her for? He asked her for milk. What did she reply with? She replied that the herd was out, and the only goat standing in the corner of the tent was too thin to have any milk. What did the Prophet وسلم, do? The Prophet وسلم, touched the udders of the goat reciting in the name of Allah. Suddenly, plenty of milk flowed. Who did the Prophet first offer it to? He first offered the milk to Umm Ma'bad and then to the others, and he himself drank the last of all. What did he do then? He again milked the goat, filled the bowl with milk, and gave it to Umm Ma'bad. Did they meet any other person during their journey? Yes, they met Zubair at the head of a caravan returning from Syria. What did Zubair present to the Prophet ﷺ? He presented to them two white garments, which were thankfully accepted by them. Did any other person? Did any other person other than Suraqa ride in pursuit of the Prophet ﷺ? Yes, Abu Buraida, one of those lured by their by their lust for the reward, tried to chase the Prophet ﷺ. What happened to him? No sooner did he face the Prophet ﷺ and talk to him, then he embraced Islam along with his seven men. What did he do then? He took off his turban, tied it around his lance, and took it as a banner to mark the advent of the Prophet ﷺ.
How was the journey to Medina? It was a weary journey through everyone was hopeful. The Prophet وسلم, and his fellow travelers had to travel across sandy deserts, hills, and mountains. How long was the journey from Mecca to Medina? The journey from Mecca to Medina was 400 kilometers. How many days did it take? It took about nine days to get from Mecca to Medina. Thank you all for listening. Any questions? Thank you, Ayan. That was a beautiful presentation. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I'm happy to be the conductor today. I thought that everyone's present.